Hey everyone, the Randavini here with another tutorial for um, this time for uh, Allegorithmic uh, Substance Designer 3. It is um, by far um, one of the more awesome texturing tools for um, for for game engines. Uh, possibly for film, but but uh, game engines definitely. It ties in directly with uh, with Unity and even um, even UDK. So let's begin with this. Um, this this story will run through um, the, some of the basics of uh, of how to use um, the Substance Designer three and even implementing it into Unity, which is even implemented similarly to um, UDK, which is absolutely amazing. Well, if you're hearing this like noise in the background, that's my cat. Um, he he's on my lap right now and he won't leave me alone, so because he has to cuddle right now. Anyway, let's start. Uh, let's name this something, uh, this text substance, that's just the name they'll come up as in, uh, in whatever engine you use it in. So let's hit, hit OK. Now I've got a, a graph here. Oh yes, um, by default you have, uh, three output nodes. These nodes will show up in the, uh, as as some of you might remember from uh, Strumpy, the nodes in in your shader, these are what what come out, come out into them. They'll just they'll go into the shader in these nodes, and they can be surprisingly more complex than um than uh, Strumpy. In fact, this 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 engine this uh system pretty much uh I'm gonna say now is the is the love child of um end of Dedu and uh, the UDK um. Material editor. For those who don't know what Dido is, it's a similar texturing tool. It makes it calculates some scratches and uh, well, te calculates where textures should be on a mesh and normals of a mesh. It is amazing. So let's actually begin with this. Um, start with I'm gonna get this one texture I did. Uh, sort of showcasing what the hell I did as well. Um, I've got the I textured and actually made the head of a uh, gypsy danger from uh, from the uh, film uh, what was the Pacific Rim. Now let's drag and drop this in. Now you notice there's two options here: link and import. I prefer link because that uh, link means it's read only, meaning it's it's only going to be readable and not edit editable inside of this uh, in inside of the program. If you want to keep this the the if you want to keep the texture the same way as you got it in, then do link. If you want, to, if you want to change it along the way and want to constantly update, uh, as you export things out of Substance into there, uh, into the one texture, then go import. You can edit the uh, texture within. It takes in the it rather than link, link, linking externally, it imports directly into Substance. So let's go. I'll just go link just for now. So to begin with, uh, yes, that's sort of the Jager sort of look. Um, so this is our first texture. It's not, you can move things around left click, uh, and also notice that there's these little dots here. These are the output nodes. If they're on the right, they're out. They're outputs. If they're on the left, they're inputs. They'll also be named what they what they need and what they are. Uh, what kind of output or input they are. If these don't show up, uh, the names don't show up. Go to Windows and. I think I think it is uh, one of these. Pre no, some preferences, editors, something in here. Ah, uh, whatever. I'll we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, for now, um, we're gonna I'm gonna run through some fairly cool things you can do in here, along with some functional things you can do in here. Sorry about that. My cat's making noises again. Um, so, so with we got um these uh. These not quite presets, but these are like functions on the side here. Filters, functions, f material filters. These are your friends. A lot of these things in the, in this engine are your friends. Say that and hold on one tick. My cat's about to do something funny. No, he's not. Okay, so and then we got one sec. Ah. Um, 
So, the first thing we can do is, uh, I'll show you an example, is um, all these tools here you can search through, but search doesn't work that well yet, I've been finding. Um, that could be wrong. So, what you can do with things is like, uh, let's do, uh, let's choose one of these. We've got adjustments, blending, let's try, let's try blend by getting another texture in. Let us all, uh, take another just round texture. Yeah, that'll do. It's a weird, uh, screenshot I did. You can decipher what that is later. It's nothing wrong, it's just... It's weird. It's, a, it's the w creepy woody head staring to Robotnik's eyes. Um, so we've got these two sources linked in, just to try some of these out. Um, these are your blend modes, like in Photoshop. Um, they're mathematic, um, algorithms to get, uh, certain effects out. Like add, you remember some of these also work like just like in uh, in Strumpy. Also tells you why we'll be in the foreground and the background and marks them beautifully. So sometimes we put this in the foreground, put this in the background. Oh, even better than that, it also gives you the, the preview just like in the UDKs, the material editor. So that's what it's looking like so far. It shows you right here. And double click on it, you get the full preview down here. Ooh, some more fun things. So these are these are just some of the blending modes. There's blurs that go all across the object, etc. Oh, some of these are fun. Um, let's get some something like Uber Emboss color. Now, note something with the color of these no of these uh, inputs and outputs. Move this back slightly. Inputs and outputs. Um, if it's a, a a colored circle here, it that means it's a pretty much a colored node going in. If it's a gray one, it's a grayscale color going in, uh, map going in. It doesn't mean it restricted. No, it doesn't mean that at all. Meaning, if you bring in something with color and plug it in, it kindly puts like a gray a gray node in here, or makes it makes it grayscale. That's something fun we have right here. So that's a different here, like, boom. We have a little difference here, but imagine a lot of these just put together. You can make an entire wave, maze of these, and just awesome things happen. Anyway, um, let's continue. You got other things we can do with this, like, you got glow. Sure, just the fun effects, why not? And change things down here as well, the parameters. Clear amount, yeah. Ooh, size. Why not? Oh, there's other things like you can, if you want a normal map, there's some things here that can help you generate a normal map out of objects. For instance, plug this in here. There we have a normal map. And out of the objects we have, we, you can get off like if you bake it off the of an of a mesh, you can use that very well for this as well. Um, and it's recommended you do that rather than baking it off of uh, the texture here because it's a bit more accurate for the mesh itself. But it does mean you can do some fun things with this. Uh, let's see, what else we have here? So these are just the functions. Uh, then we actually have the individual functions here. But I'll go in, into these momentarily. This is where you, some advanced and fun stuff can happen. If you know your maths. Which is, uh, some of it is uh, complex, some of it isn't. Wait, when you right click here, in anywhere on this plane, you get some more tools. Some input and output nodes, etc. Like, uh, let's just get a warp. Gradient input. Wait, oh, we want an input here. And what we want to want a gradient input of, apparently? Let's test that a little bit. Wow, that, that, I'm gonna be honest, that looks kind of weird. Let's try, let's try the other round. Ooh. This is looking weird. So this is like a little warp thing, it's distorting it. There's some cool, very cool effects in, in this um in, in this tool they can put together. Alright. Well so the next thing I'm gonna do isn't the end of it. Uh there's play more I'm gonna be showing. Plug plug this into here and you've got uh diffuse. 
which is up here. Plug it into here, and you've got a, a speculator. Uh, a speculator that can go in. Oh, yes. Um, actually, let's go into normals. Why not? Put this down here, actually. This means we're going to be exporting uh, the diffuse and and specular and no normal maps. That's right. I keep thinking specular for some reason. Anyway, uh, that is normal. Yeah. One sec. Yes, so that's the normal maps right there. Um, so, that means this is uh, the preview of it. Now, to export what, what you've made here and to make these nodes uh, take place in your, sh in your new shader, uh, you just gotta save the package first. Uh, give it a moment. Substance. Text substance, just save it here. And uh, next thing you want to do is go publish selected elements. When you publish it, you can uh, do this, this is where um, you make you export the final file. Um, you can continue editing the file as you want. Just it, I don't want to call it the final file. It's what you export as. It's called it's a substance file that you import into into Unity or UK or I assume there's other engines that actually support that. Um, that uh, they'll import it directly and act as if it's a new shader. Um, let's try that out. Let's bring up Unity. I've made a plan already here. And one thing I'm going I'm to import is uh, I've got images. Oh, oh that's oh, I'm going where the image is stored. And now I see the SBSAR for file. Drag that, drop that into your into your, your Unity. And you have a new um, file here. Notice it has an arrow next to it. And also notice here it's got the uh, shader in here. So, open this up. Here you have your uh, your actual material file with the shader already in it. When you do this, you got uh, everything set up here already. Um, this, is, this is quite a bit of fun, I can see. Uh, What you got here is uh some some of the so some things like random seed like uh this will change every now. One of the things you can just randomly um set in in, in here um the, basically there's variables you can change once it's already in the engine. Like uh remember exposed variables from Strumpy or various other well scripting programs, you can change change them around in, in here as well once you make them. And expose the variable in such a, such a way as uh, let's just do one here. Uh, choose warp. Let's see if I can change the what happens when it changes intensity. Yes. Okay. Now we want to ex expose T text substance input name new uh, and intensity works. Let's so ex uh, save and export that again. Import it again. Uh, yeah, that should do. Import it again. It's gonna make another another text substance, but oh whatever. Bring it in here. Oh crap! Okay, here we go. So now we have an intensity slider. It changes it. This can change things inside of the engine without having to go back externally into substance and changing little things here and there before exporting again. Uh, this fun little detail. Then uh, another fun thing, also, um, you might notice I clicked on these things here. These are uh, these are where things can change dramatically and where these functions come in. Can come in. Some of these can't even be drop, drag and drop into this very uh, text substance stage. So let's bring something up like, uh, let's see. Let's change something here in the ad. The opacity. Let's see what it comes out as. We can, want, we can do something like with, you know, with time here. Uh, edit a little bit, get float of time, 
Okay, so basically we're going to do a sub of chart. We've got save text substance here. Then we've got um the the opacity below it. So wait one second, Let's see if we can the timings. What? Yes. Okay, um let's play this a little bit. So save. Okay, so we've got a time based node here. Um we can money that we can also edit that, but I'm gonna test something out here. Publish. See that already attracts to uses the time node. Huh. It's fun. One thing. Substance. We're not found. That's not a good thing. Clear. Try this again. Maybe I had an error in there also. Huh, that's an actual error. We'll see what that is eventually. But uh that's some of the basics right there. I'll once I figure out some more about the uh these things, where you can start plugging like all your values in their variables some crazy stuff can happen. I'll set a video for that. Thank you for watching.